Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. Today we have a unique video. We have two examples of the same bolt carrier. These are the new Error Precision Pro Series. We have one that Error Precision wanted to send to us. And typically I don't accept parts from manufacturers because it's possible they can cherry pick. I like to take random samples. And to make it more fair, we did get a random sample from one of the subscribers of the channel, sent it in. I wrote on here owner, I wrote on here arrow. So when I unpack them, I'm going to put a sharpie mark on them so I know whose is who, so we don't mix them up. This will go back to arrow precision, and this will go back to the owner. I wasn't paid by arrow to do this video, so it's going to go as it goes. So let's go ahead and unpack them. I have not had these out, so I'm not sure what's in these. Um, we have a sticker, Pro Series sticker. I like that it has this packaging because nothing sucks more than to have to use scissors and stuff to get open blister packaging. And there's the first bolt carrier. Let's go ahead and mark it up. I'm going to pull the bolt head out and mark that as well. the packaging off the table and let's get the one that was sent in by an individual owner I lost the sticker again I will keep the sticker from air precision they can't have it back Just marking the one that was privately owned with an O. All right, here we go, side by side. I don't see any difference. Let's go ahead and tear them down. First, as always, let's do our gas ring test. Bolt extended. Bolt extended. They both pass. I've already started removing paint from it, so hopefully it stays put. Let's get my trusty firing pin retaining pin tool out. Retaining pin was a little difficult to extract. Let's see if it's hard to get back in. No, oh, it goes in. Maybe just because it's new. Yeah, they are hard to remove initially. Let's see if I can get it back in there. I could, just a little tight. Firing pins appear to be coated. Maybe nitride. DLC maybe. The cam pins are marked. Aero Precision was kind enough to actually Give us a little bit of a shout out, if you want to call it, for this feature that they put on the cam pins. Several manufacturers do this after they've been to the classes or talk to me about it. Let's get this apart. Start cam pin again, and we have another mark on it. It's not blaringly obvious. It looks like it was marked and then finished so it's not silver I guess if it was silver some people would be concerned about things rusting so get the bolt out and now we're disassembled so let's go ahead and work on the bolt first and then work our way towards the carriers pull the extractor out let's do it on one over here you're gonna see more of my arms because I'm working across the bench all right, so let's work on the extractor first. The extractor looks pretty slick and smooth. The claw has some good bite to it. Let's check it with the gauge. No go side does not go in. Go so got go side does. Let's go to the other one. Pretty smooth finish. Claw feels good. No go side does not go in. Go side does. Let's put that off to the side. 
They did use the rubber insert and the O-ring. And the spring feels like what you see on a lot of AR bolts. It's not an extra power that I can feel. It's definitely not a weak one. Some of the ones that I see that come through classes and across my bench, they're really, really weak springs. So this one I'd say is in the middle of the road between a weak spring and an extra power spring. All right, so extractors are done. Let's move on to the bolt. Let's check the bolt face, the ejector, and firing pin protrusion. So let me get a punch. Spring tension on this one is good. No binding. There is a bevel on the ejector, which is something I like to see. That prevents the ejector from getting peened over on the very leading edge and getting stuck in the ejector channel inside the bolt. You can see that on some high-use guns. And this one also feels good as well. No binding. Nice bevel on the ejector edge. Let's look at the bolts themselves. Finish on them looks pretty clean. They are engraved MPI. Let me get a cotton swab and clean this bolt face, see if we can get a good look at it. Bolt face is pretty smooth. I hit the camera with the uh, cotton swab. I apologize for making it shake around. Bolt face looks good though. Let's move to the other bolt. Same type of markings, same Same finish, bolt face looks good. I don't see any brass marks on here, so I'm not sure if these are tested in any way for function or high pressure. Normally that is one of the indicators that has been high pressure tested, and these are not marked high pressure tested. It doesn't mean that they're not. Some companies vary on how they mark things, but typically if it's high pressure tested, you're gonna see bolts, uh, you're gonna see the bolt with brass on it because most companies just won't take the time to clean that off there. It's not necessary. All right, let's move to measuring the support ring. So I'm going to bring this over here, and let's make sure that this is zeroed out. One click, and we're zeroed. The number we'd like to see is 0.528. We have 5281. That's actually pretty good. This ring here has nothing to do with gassing. And this one's right about 528. And you get slightly different readings depending on how you're putting that on there. But we're at about 528 on both of these, which is pretty good. This has nothing to do with gassing. This controls how much slop there is when it's inside of the carrier. So this dimension along with the first opening in the carrier determines how much play there is. Nothing to do with gas. So that's actually pretty good. A lot of bolts in the market will fall into like the 527, I'm sorry, yeah, 5275 range, maybe 527. So they're usually about 01 undersized. But that's good. Let's check the bolt tail. We have our reject gauge with the red ring on it and our no-go gauge here. So let's see if they go into the no-go. If it doesn't go into the no-go, it won't go into the rejector field. That one passes, and this one passes. Both good signs. All right, let's check the firing pin tips. Sometimes we have a challenge getting this on camera. Let me get both of them. Tips look good to me. It might be hard to see on camera. Let's go ahead and do well, let's go ahead and do something new. Let's try to use the bore scope. This isn't something you'd have to use, but I'm going to grab the bore scope. I'll come over here with this, and I'm going to see if I can look at these with the bore scope. You're probably going to see my fingerprints. Let me get the light turned on. I gotta change the focus. I normally do this in classes for students that have trouble seeing the tip. 
me grab this in my vise so I can get better control of it. Got to be really careful if you do this because you can crust the glass rod in here. Not something that I recommend normally. So let me take a look here. Just trying some new things on camera here. I'm not getting a really clear image here. We're getting too much reflection, so let me turn the light off. That's a little better. Let me try to clean it. Everything I'm doing is wrong. Well, that experimentation failed, so let's get our light back on here. I apologize for that little tangent. I just wanted to try to give you all a better view. From what I can see here, though, the tips look very good. Let me try to get some more light in here somewhere else. It's hard to see these tips because the firing pins are dark. But they both look good. You just want to make sure they have a nice dome tip to them. I may have switched those by accident. We'll find out when we check protrusion. All right, so let's go ahead and check protrusion first. Let's check and make sure we have free travel. We do. You also want to check in multiple coordinates. Twist it because if it's bent, sometimes when it comes through here, you rotate it 180 degrees or 90 degrees, and the firing pin will bend. So multiple positions while you're doing this. O295, that's good. Our range should be between 28 and 36. So that one passes. Right at the minimum at 28. I let go a little bit there. Twenty-nine point five. Better hold here. Between 29 and 29.5. Make sure I've got a good purchase on this. Don't want to give any false readings. For some reason, this is giving me problems. Twenty-eight point five. So we have the minimum for both of them. They both pass. All right. Bolt tail, firing pin, protrusion. Let's do. The bolt face, make sure that it passes. With this one, what we're going to do is try to use the gauge as a weight in itself, make sure that it drops down all the way into the face, and it does. Let's do this one, and it does. So, bolt face passes. Now, let's go to firing pin hole. Green side goes in. Reject side doesn't even want to start. Let's go to the other one. Reject side don't want to start. Passes to go. Very good. All right, let's do our cam pin gauge. They undersize the other side instead of swaging it. The reject won't go in, and the stretch gauge won't even start. This is the side the cam pin goes in. You can see they put a bevel on it. Other side, it won't start. Something you may not know, and a little tip, but I can tell by looking at these. Let me grab one real quick. Some bolts that you see, you'll see two little peened edges. You'll see one there and one there, and that'll prevent the cam pin from being put in on the wrong side. And this is how that's done. A one inch ball bearing. So put it onto the bolt and use it either a press or a hammer of some type and strike it to peen those edges over. 
that could, in theory, stress the part, depending on the finish, depending on what the bolt is made of. They opted out of that procedure here and just undersized this side here in some way to not let the cam pin pass on the wrong side. So, interesting feature. All right, let's keep on moving. Now we want to go to magnetism test. So let's see if anything is magnetic. Firing pin. Only one of the firing pins. So some people don't watch all the videos, and when they don't, they ask questions. Why are we worried about parts that might have a magnetic charge to them? We worry about it because if you shoot steel case ammunition, the projectile is bimetal and the casing is steel, which means that if it shaves material feeding or extracting during firing or just cycling the action with live ammunition, it can shave off material and it can get stuck to the working parts of the action, which could cause failures to function. So let's fix this. Alright, let's come back over and see if we fix the problem. Nope. It's got a pretty strong charge on it. See if I fixed it. Still magnetic. Because I was flipping things around, I couldn't say whether or not this came from the private owner's bolt carrier or the one from Error Precision. So what I'll do is if this won't demagnetize, this will be the first that I've seen. I'll put this into the error precision and send it back to them so they can address it. Let's come back over and see if the problem is solved. Let's go back to the old firing pin and see if it's an issue just to make sure that that didn't take a magnetic charge, right? Finally fixed it. So this one had a pretty heavy magnetic charge on it, um, but we fixed it. What I was trying to say is, don't know how it always happens. Some people will use magnetic parts trays to put their parts in. If you put stuff in there, that can get magnetic. Um, sometimes the magnetic particle process could leave residual magnetism. There's lots of ways that it can happen. But we fixed the issue. Let's move on. That was an interesting one. I've never had a part require that much demagnetizing before. All right, so bolts. Let's check headspace. Here's our test barrel we always use. Let's not even try 223 go. Let's go right to the 556. Let's get brave and let's see if it closes. And it does. Let's go to the reject or the field. And we're good. That one passes. Let's go to this one. That passes. Let's go to the reject. And that one passes. We're good. Headspace is good on both bolts. So for bolts, we're all done. I'll go ahead and segregate these so they stay together. Be on the firing pins. I didn't switch anything. Let's go to the carriers. Let's check and make sure we have a proper gas path. Can we see through there? Good. And this one. Are we through? Perfect. Let's do our reverse test. I have to find the appropriate bit. The 
screws on this are not marked YFS. The staking looks very aggressive, especially for the type of coating it has. I'm not sure if it's DLC or nitride. Um, sometimes you'll see very minor staking on nitride components because if you try to nitride, let me get another bit. If you try to nitride, or if you try to stake something that's nitride too much, it'll break material off. So you might see on certain nitride components that it looks like the staking isn't sufficient. It's not always the case. It just means that they have to be a little bit more mild with it because they don't want to break material off. So we have the right bit. Let's start at 20 inch pounds, and then we'll work up to our final number. Let's go over to the vise. Just set to 20, and let's see if we get any movement. No. All right, let's go up to 30. Now this 30 is not checking for absolute perfection when it comes to installation of these. It's looking for a worst case scenario. If the fastener broke in some way, if the staking was grossly insufficient, or if they didn't go with enough torque, inch pounds, that is, for these screws. Doesn't mean that it's not over torqued, just means that something isn't really off. And it passes at 30 for that one. Passes at 30 for that one. Very good. Let's go to the other one. It's going to go straight to 30 on this one. Passes. Passes. Good. So you can see, still at 30. All right, let's check uh, carrier key alignment. That one passes. I do apologize for my hands being dirty work with my hands. This one's slightly off. This is the one provided by Arrow. There's a little bit of slop in that. So let's go to the slightly smaller pin. And we still have some misalignment there. Check it with the gauge. It does take the what I refer to as a reject gauge for the gas key. What that means is this gas key dimension is slightly inefficient. Doesn't mean that it will not work, it just means that it's slightly oversized in relation to if this was the gas tube when they go together. So it leaks a little bit of gas. So on this carrier and on some guns, if it has a really, really small gas port or if other areas of the gas system leak, it might not cycle and lock the bolt open on the last round. This one also went in. So the gas keys are slightly oversized on these. Let's check again for the arrow one, just to make sure something's not messed up. So let's put it in like this and test it, and then we'll rotate the pin and make sure nothing's bent or out of spec. It's a little better that time. We can get it to go through. This one is slightly misaligned. Now one thing that I check here too on these videos is I check with a stripped upper. The important check with the bolt carrier you have is with the actual gas tube that's installed in your gun. So your gas tube will be basically your alignment gauge. So instead of using this and a stripped upper, you'll put your upper together, the gas tube will go through, and you'll drop your stripped carrier into it like so and make sure that it collapses over the tube without any resistance. All right, let's measure the carrier length. We 
want the magic number 667. We have that there, 6675. Let's go to this one. 667. Good. So length on these are good. Let's go to our freeboard gauges. Won't go on the yellow. Won't go down on that yellow. It goes down on that one. So we're green, green, green. Let's take the yellow one, drop it in. I'm not going to force it, it won't go. So this is an efficient bolt carrier. Let's go to the other one. Let's go straight to this one since we had it out already. It won't take the yellow for the bolt tail for that one. And let's go up here. I started on the second green just because I figured it would. It won't go on the yellow. That's good. Good. All right, we're green, green, green on this one too. Check this one. All right, let's go to the inside of the carrier. Let me clean these out real quick, make sure there's no preservatives there was inside here so we can get a good image with the bore scope. One thing I sometimes forget to mention in videos is we use a bore scope here because typically in a class I tell students to just use a pen light. I don't know where mine is. I went missing. That's interesting. But I have a pen light. We shine it in here and I tell students to use the naked eye to look at this. I can't really get up in here and get a good look with the camera so we use the bore scope to take its place. You don't have to use a bore scope to look inside of your bolt carrier. It just gives those of you watching a better perspective. More detail. Alright, so let's get these moved back. And let's see what we get. Ready? And in we go. So this is our bolt support shoulder. Let me change the focus a little bit. This is the one that Air Precision sent. Finish on the inside looks good. It's sometimes hard to see when you're looking at nitride components because they don't give you that reflection that chrome would. Now we're into the gas ring run. You can see the gas vents here. Let me try to find the other one. There they are. The finish looks really good here. That's some oil right there. That's what that shine is. Maybe I didn't get everything out with the cotton swabs. Let's go into the bolt tail. Change the focus a little bit. And that looks pretty clean as well. You'll see like this eggshell pattern. You'll typically see this on components that are nitrided. It happens in barrels. It happens in bolt carriers. We come back this way. Look at the gas ring run again. Look around a little bit more. I'm adjusting the focus on the fly here so we can get some better images. Overall surface finish looks very good on this. I'm going now to the owner supplied one. This one, the finish has a little bit more of that eggshell on it. Like I said, pretty typical of nitride. It's our cam pin recess. Now we're into the gas ring run. This one is a little rougher than the previous one. Let's go into the bolt tail. Bolt tail looks good. 
bad. The Air Precision one did have, well, the Air Precision provided one did have a slightly better inside finish than the one that was provided by the owner. I can't remember if the owner provided one was the one that had the gas key alignment. Let's check it again. No, nope, it was the Air Precision provided one, I think. Yep, this one's got a little bit more bind in it. See? So, Air Precision will see this. If they have to make any adjustments with anything, um, they'll have this back to do some testing. Like I said, the final thing will be, let's assume that this was your gas tube installed in your upper receiver. When the bolt carrier comes home, it telescopes over the gas tube. And if it needs alignment, this, you basically just tweak your gas tube a little bit with the, the, the correct tools. All right, so we did this, this, got all the gauges out of the way. Make sure that I have these with the right ones. This is the arrow with the arrow and owner with the owner. So overall, everything went pretty smooth. We had a magnetism issue with one of the firing pins, but as far as the specs go with everything, everything specced out slightly oversized gas key. You wanted a number for this one, it's 0.182. The max TDP spec, technical data spec, should be 1815, if I remember off the top of my head. But this gets into the no-go range. Doesn't mean that it won't work, it's just slightly inefficient. Um, we had some magnetism, slightly oversized, slightly misaligned here. Um, besides that, I don't remember anything else through the video. I think this was a uh, pretty interesting physical. Both of these passed in my opinion. I'll make sure that the owner sees this and error precision sees this. Remember this is an example of two. And as always I hope you found this video educational. Thanks for watching.